Hey, it's me, Miss Morales, back in Angry Birds. Hey, there's a quadratic. Look, there it is. You know, I'm really stuck on this level, and I want to beat this level. And if I could just learn where to hit it at that point where the quadratic hit the ground, then I could beat this level because I'd know where to hit it. Let's try another Angry Birds. Okay, I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to slingshot him. There he goes. Oh, ah, don't hit me. Oh, where'd that guy hit the ground? If I could just figure out where it could hit the ground, then I could beat Angry Birds. Um, and I wonder if we use quadratics to figure it out. I'm sure we can. Math is the answer. All right, let's find out. Hey guys, it's me, Miss Morales. Today we're going to be talking about how to find the zeros of a quadratic equation. First of all, what I'd like you to do is kind of sketch out this graph. Notice it's a parabola and it um, hits the ground here at negative one. So draw a point on your graph at negative one. Kind of sketch it going up and back down and hitting again here at four and kind of set up a little graph like that on your paper. Um, the reason why I want you to draw that graph is I want to talk about how can you find the zeros of a quadratic equation. Um, I'd also like you to copy down this paragraph here. Um, the zeros are where the graph, or it, hits the ground, where the height equals zero. When you're looking at a graph, the zeros are the x-intercepts. Those points are the ones on the ground with height, or y value, of zero. And that's why they're called the zeros. Right, so if you're looking at this parabola, you can see it hits the ground at negative one and four. So that must mean that the zeros of this parabola, or this quadratic equation, are x equals negative one and x equals four. So we have two zeros because we have two points right here and right here where the graph has a height of zero, right? Where the y-coordinate is zero, and that happens when x equals four and x equals negative one. Now, how would you be able to go back and find the equation that goes with this graph? Well, the equation, oops, is always going to be like this. When you want to get the equation of a graph, if you know the zeros, it can be like this. y is equal to x minus whatever your first zero is, times x minus whatever your second zero is, right? So you can kind of use the factors um, of the quadratic equation to go backwards and write an equation. So let's go ahead and do that for this problem. I have y is equal to x minus my first zero, which is negative one, times x minus my second zero, which is four. And then I could go ahead and kind of clean that up a little bit. This is going to be x minus a negative, same as adding, so x plus one. And over here I just have x minus four. Now we do have to take into consideration that this graph is opening downwards, and we know from previous experience that when a graph opens downward, it's got an A um, coefficient that's negative. So if you put a negative one right here, that's going to help control the graph because it opens downward. And there would be... Um, the equation for this graph. Y is equal to negative one, because it opens downward, times x plus one, because our first zero is negative one, times x minus four. So one thing I want you guys to notice here is notice why does x equal negative one and x equal four make this whole thing equal to zero? That's how you solve a quadratic equation. So notice if, um, if x equals negative one, the equation equals zero. And that's what we want. When we want to solve a quadratic equation, we want to find the x values that make the quadratic equation equal to zero. So let's go ahead and plug in. We go back to our equation. 
y equals negative one times, if you let x equals negative one, which is our zero, so we're gonna plug in right here, let x equal negative one, um, plus one, and then you're gonna plug in for x right there as well, so if we let x equal negative one, right, we're gonna have to plug it in for both x's, so I can plug in right there, negative one, and I plug it into my equation, then minus four. I wonder if that does equal zero. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do the math on there. So I got negative one. Negative one plus one is zero. Negative one minus four is negative five. So now we have y is equal to that. Y is equal to negative one times zero is zero. Zero times negative five is zero. So notice when x is equal to negative one, the equation's equal to zero. So that's telling us that x equals negative one is a zero of the equation. Okay, so I hope that helps show you guys a little bit about zeros and how to solve a quadratic equation using zeros.